What is up guys, Andy Forrest Steam Runner here and today we're going to be taking a look at how the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon and the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2 are holding up after 200 miles. So a couple of months ago, you guys might remember me saying this about the Rincon. The shoe is holding up really well. I'm finding the midsole cushioning is just as good as it was when I bought it. If anything, it's wearing in and getting better. I'm really, really enjoying putting the miles and the workouts into this shoe. And some of you might remember me saying this about the Turbo 2. It's just the fact of paying that amount of money for this shoe. It just it doesn't sit easy with me. Well over 200 miles have passed in both of these shoes now and today I kind of want to show you the deterioration between the two shoes, the difference. We have one that is aging not so well and we have another which is aging like a fine wine, doing really really well. So today we're going to go through everything as to how these things are holding up, how many more miles I think we've got left in both these shoes. So if you're excited for today's video guys make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and without further ado let's dive in. So let's start off this video by saying this isn't a review between the two shoes, it's more of a comparison as to how they are doing over 200 miles. It's not a sort of video that I would normally do, but I've got such a contrast in emotions and feelings with these two shoes that I kind of felt the urge to share them with you this week. And in particular, for those of you eagle-eyed viewers, you will have noticed in my last video on my training vlog, I heaped praise on the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2 and as soon as I switched the camera off I thought to myself gosh the difference between these two shoes and the way they're degrading as the mileage goes on is massive and I want to share that with you just as a point of reference second point to note I'm not taking anything away from the Rincon before a lot of you might say that I've changed my mind on it this is still the 2019 shoe of the year for me it's just such a brilliant shoe and I am if I'm excited for any shoe this year it's the second iteration of the Rincon but I think there is one flaw in this shoe that is the midsole that has kind of highlighted itself as time has gone on now I made that previous video from the clip you saw in the intro back a couple of months ago now two or three months ago and I just hit 150 miles in the shoe now I have over 215 miles in the shoe so another 75 miles and things have certainly changed with this shoe so uh, the idea of this is for me to tell you kind of what has changed and then compare it to a shoe that I complained about in the beginning because I felt like I was paying a premium price and not getting a premium product I labeled this shoe as good I liked it and I get on very well with it but I felt that 160 pounds at full retail price for the turbo 2 was just too much but Again, am I changing my mind on that statement? I think I am, if I'm honest with you. So let's dive into the comparisons between the two and how they are degrading. I'm not sure degrading is the right word, but getting older, how the shoes are getting on as we put more miles in them. Are they deteriorating is a better way of putting it. So the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon, in terms of everything on this shoe, albeit it's very dirty and dusty, the upper itself has held up really, really well. As I said, the only flaw that I can find in this shoe, and I'll give you the exact details, is the midsole. But in terms of the upper itself, bar the fact that if some of you remember, I stood on a thorn back early days in this shoe and it went through the midsole and up, shaved the side of my toe and came up through the outside of the foot. Other than that, it's done really, really well. In terms of the outsole pattern here, exposed foam and a bit of rubber. You can see in the middle where I'm predominantly landing midfoot, there's a bit of wear and tear, but after 200 miles, that's not bad, especially for a shoe that is just exposed foam and only a few bits of outsole rubber. So in terms of the wear and tear on the bottom, it's really, really good. And what am I using it for at the moment? I'm using it on the trails. I'm trying to eke out as much mileage as possible. And that's basically because the midsole, the EVA midsole in this shoe has just gone as flat as a pancake. It is actually feeling quite hard to run on. So these shoes are quite firm in the beginning anyway, but they've got that perfect balance of firmness and cushionness, which is why I love them so, so much. But it seems to have lost, for me, all cushionness 
and is now just feels like you're running on a very firm block of foam, which is why I am only using them on the trails. I used them on the tarmac last night, actually, or Monday evening for whenever you see this video. And if I'm honest with you, it was a rather uncomfortable experience. Got seven miles in them and I thought that's probably the last time that run I'm gonna to get to be putting in these shoes. I will save them for the trails and try and get as many more miles out of them as I can because they seem to be okay on the trails with the softness underfoot. And I just begrudge retiring a shoe after only 200 miles. I want to do my best to at least get it to 250, if not 300, but 250 is the goal. So only 34 miles to go. And that for me is a real shame, a real disappointment because it's a shoe I wanted to use as much as I can and take forward as much as I can. It's just, even though I've retired it from racing, it's still great for workouts, it fits well, it just it works really well for me and that's a shame. And as I said, in contrast, this Nike Pegasus Turbo 2 is a shoe that I labelled as good. I think I gave it like a 7 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10 in my initial impressions and after all the testing and my final thoughts after 100 miles. And I believe I remember saying that this shoe feels like it's getting better with age, it's getting better the more miles I put in it. But I just felt perturbed by the fact that I had spent so much money on this shoe. However, the statement that I made was I'm paying for a premium product. You hear me say this a lot when I buy a shoe, especially with the Carbon X. I'm paying for a premium product. I ex uh, Paying a premium price, I expect a premium product. I felt in the beginning that I wasn't getting that. It just felt like a very sort of box standard shoe. And if I was going to swap between the two for workouts and things, I would always go for the Rincon. Felt so much faster, lighter, better on my feet than this thing. But... Weirdly enough, I am now gravitating towards the Pegasus Turbo 2 over any other shoe in my rotation. Whatever run I might be doing, even an easy run, especially the long runs, and now in workouts, I'm finding myself levitating towards this thing. Now, interestingly, this didn't have that much miles in it, but if you look through my Strava lately, you'll have seen that I've done a lot, a lot, a lot of runs in this shoe. I really am leaning on this shoe quite a lot, which makes me... Beg the, well, it begs the question, am I wrong in my statement that I'm paying a premium price for a, a product I don't feel is giving me a premium experience? And I do believe that I have to retract that statement. I feel that after 200 miles, the midsole feels as fresh as anything. And I believe that's going to be a combination of the React and the Zoom X midsole in this shoe. I love the React foam in my Pegasus 36 trail shoes. It was so soft. React is something I want to explore more of this year. But sadly, the air pockets also inside the trail 36 shoe feel like they've collapsed completely because my feet now just turn in really badly. But this thing is just holding up well. And I believe that's just the combination of the Zoom X foam, which makes me want to try next percent shoe even more if that is full length Zoom X midsole. But in terms of this shoe wear and tear on every other aspect the upper the lacing the outsole it's just nothing it's just so good and again excuse the dirt on the shoe but as you can see there there is just no wear and tear on that outsole tread at all i am predominantly as you just saw in the rink on a midfoot uh, striker and you can see there the detail the pattern on the outsole is still there for all to be seen. So in terms of a comparison, this is what I wanted to do for you guys, show you a shoe that is holding up really, really well. And I believe that I can get a load more miles in this thing. And I'm excited to get a load more miles in this thing. I really hope that I can hit 400 plus miles in this shoe. I really think I can. Whereas compared to a shoe that has sadly dying a very slow and painful death. And it's really sad for me because I'm really hoping that in the Rincon 2, which I don't think they are, but if they did, they would be able to tweak the midsole somehow just to be able to get a bit more life out of the shoe. I understand that shoes have a purpose and the purpose for the Rincon is certainly to be a more nimble, lightweight racer or a training shoe. I say racer, it's not geared up for racing, but I liked it for racing. I know a lot of you guys liked it for racing and that's something that I would love to be able to explore using the Rincon 2 for, but I just feel like I'm scared that they're not gonna do that in the Rincon version 2. We'll have to see. So those are my thoughts on the comparisons between the two, how they're holding up. In terms of everything bar the midsole, both the shoes are doing really, really well, but it's the midsole that sadly is letting the Rincon down. But what are your thoughts? I know a lot of you guys that watch the channel have the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon and I know that you guys love it. Some of you don't get on with the Hoka shoes, that's fine. But if you do, what's your experience? How long are they lasting for you? And likewise with the Pegasus Turbo 2, I know a lot of you guys out there run in the Turbo 2 or the Turbo 1 and I know a lot of you rave about the fact that this thing lasts a very long time and I'm inclined to agree straight off the bat 200 miles in I can foresee a lot of use 
with this shoe. Let me know in the comments below what your experiences are with these two shoes. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you didn't mind me sharing my thoughts on these two, but I felt it was quite poignant at the moment with all the training that I'm doing to share the thoughts on these two. Any other shoes, let me know in the comments below. So that's it for today, guys. If you like it, give it a, well, give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Until then.